train the muscles, not the joints. Welcome back to Natural Glam Bodybuilding, and today I'm just uh, side of the road here, filming on my uh, DSLR camera rather than my other camera, which is a little bit more high maintenance. It's great to film on that camera, but the bottom line is that I'm having some computer issues right now with the raw files, and I've been on uh, tech support with uh, Apple, and I got to call Canon at some point, whatever. Anyway, there's some sort of weird sort of mishmash of crap happening, even though it's a new computer, it's not working. So anyway, here I am on the side of the road just filming this. And uh, yeah, it'd be like an old school video here. A lot of people going camping today. That's what's going on. People flying around to go camping up the logging road on my mountain. They never even asked permission. That's the real shit about it. You know what I'm saying? That's the real crap about it. They never even asked permission. They're going up my mountain. Mountain. Anyway, today I want to talk to you a little bit about recovery. And recovery is... Uh, yeah, just as just as important as beating down the muscle, you got to recover. And somebody in the comments is saying, "Hey, listen, we're talking a lot about sets and reps and progressive overload and all that kind of stuff, but how do you recover? What's important for recovery?" Well, obviously, sleep and your eating, your diet, your nutrition is what's necessary for recovery. These are the main things to worry about. Not not as much about uh, micromanaging the recovery and and all this, but but let's let's get the two big elephants in the room out of the way first. Sleep and eating. Those are the two most important things. So once in a while I'm going to pause because there's a truck going by and it's really noisy and I don't want you guys to get disturbed. So anyway, when it comes down to recovery, let's talk about eating. Now, if you're not eating enough protein, you're not going to recover. It doesn't matter what anybody tells you. If you're not eating enough, you're not going to recover. So this is why I ordered this big shipment of mackerel. So just look at this. Look at the size of this thing. And I've got two boxes like this. This is how many boxes I ordered. All right, well, what's in here? What's in the box? What's in the box? You guys are gonna laugh. What's in the box here? Okay, so I tried to order from my grocery store the stuff that I wanted, which was this. Holy mackerel. That's right, so there it is. It's mackerel fillets, just packed in water. So there's a bit of fat in there, 10 grams of fat for every 11 grams of protein, but it's a lot of good fats in there, right? So it's only one and a half grams of saturated fat, and the rest is polyunsaturated and a little bit of omega-6, but mostly omega-3s omega and some monounsaturated. But man, these things are good. Like I, I find eating these uh, with a little bit of pickles or something like that, way easier. So I, I got two boxes of them. So I spent a few hundred bucks on them, but it's worth it because I, I eat these things. Like eating one of these a day is a pretty good staple, right? So that's what I'm doing. And this mackerel is awesome. It's got about 40 grams of protein per can around there about 30 or 40 grams of, of fat, but it's good fats. Most of it's good fat, like omega-3s and things. So this is awesome because a lot of minerals in mackerel and, and fish, and I just seem to really feel good. When I eat this shit, I'm telling you, I feel great. Yeah, you can order this stuff if you want. I don't have any sort of agreement with this company or not, but they're, they're pretty good. You just have to take my word on it. So I ordered that. And the reason why I do something so insane and so crazy is because recovery matters. You need to make sure you're eating enough protein. And if you're finding that, you know, you just can't bother to eat another chicken breast or a can of tuna or something like that, and you need to kind of mix things up in order to make it interesting, well, one way to do this is to find alternate protein sources such as mackerel or different types of fish or different, different types of meats and things that you can integrate in your diet. Now, that said, carbohydrates and fats also help with recovery. It's not like these guys are dim demonized. It's not like you can look at fats and carbs and say, oh, they're so bad because, you know, I can put on fat and whatever. You know, I hate to break it to you, but if you want to sit at 4% body fat all the time or 5% body fat, there's a very strong, strong tendency to overtrain when you're at super lean body fat levels for long periods of time. Now, I'm not saying it has to be that way. If you have a natural metabolism that makes you lean, that's different than say somebody that naturally sits at about 15% body fat, but then they have to diet their ass off to get down to five, they are going to have a different sort of issue or a different, uh, there's gonna be a different effect of them having to sit at 5% body fat. And I think it's gonna be detrimental to the recovery. So having some carbohydrates in your system, like I've talked about, is gonna have a protein sparing effect. You're gonna notice that you maybe don't look quite as good. You look fuller, but you don't look as lean and as veiny, but you know what, you're gonna recover better. You're gonna have a better tendency to recover from your workouts. So trying to maintain contest shape all the time is not the best thing for recovery. There's a reason why people, when they're in contest shape, their strength goes down, they feel tired all the time, they feel a bit worn out, and if they compete too many times, they start not to look as good as they did originally. I think the guy had an accident up there or something. 
drop this trailer or some shit. So if you compete too much, you're gonna look shittier than you did in the first couple shows. So that's another reason why guys can't perpetually compete all year long. I mean, if you take a natural guy and he competes in five or six shows, you know, at some point the, he's not gonna look as peaked or as in shape or as full or as, as lean in each show. The body starts to rebound back a little bit, right? So there is a certain set point that the body likes to sit at and it's gonna be uh, different for everybody, but it's going to influence how you recover. So yeah, diet has to be there, you know? At least a gram per pound of body weight of lean mass along with some carbs and if you start putting on a lot of body fat yeah you maybe you're eating too much then you just back off on the energy foods a little bit replace it with protein or green vegetables there you go that's it's that simple you don't have to overcomplicate it now the other thing is sleep if you're not sleeping say you're really stressed out all the time your cortisol levels are going to the roof your adrenaline's going all the time at first this might seem like a very productive sort of endeavor where you might have a lot of energy for your workouts because you're like just going for life you know you're like, man, I, I can accomplish everything. I'm gonna go to the gym and yeah, lift, a, uh, lift a house and I'm gonna run and work hard and make lots of money and you know, all this kind of stuff. You got everything going on. At some point that adrenaline burst, you know, causes you to crash. And when you crash, cortisol levels go up and this can cause, uh, you know, breakdown of muscle tissue because sometimes you're running on borrowed time, right? Basically your adrenals are gonna burn off that muscle tissue a bit. I mean, it's, it's a complicated process. I'm not gonna get into it, but the bottom line is too much adrenaline will cause you to burn off muscle tissue. And yeah, you'll get leaner, but you're gonna get smaller and, and flatter too, right? <laughs> At first. So over the long run, it'll cause you to be fatter. It'll cause you not to recover and you're gonna have a whole bunch of issues. So you need to make sure that you are sleeping and if there is a lot of stuff that stresses you out or if you're having a real stressful lifestyle, if bodybuilding is your main purpose, you need to find ways to uh, extricate yourself from that stress or at least learn how to deal with it in a new way where it doesn't stress you out. Whether you learn how to meditate, you know, whether you learn how to look at things from a different perspective, these things can all help your bodybuilding gains in that way. And I've had some people ask me this question, like does meditation help your bodybuilding gains? In, in some ways, from a stress perspective, yes. If you learn how to deal with stress where it doesn't stress you out so much and you don't dwell on things for weeks and weeks at a time, yes, that will definitely translate to better bodybuilding gains. There's a whole other complicated mystical process that goes on with meditation that's different, that, that also can go against bodybuilding gains, but I'm not gonna get into that here. This, it's just a different thing and I don't know if I'll ever teach that. That's kind of secret stuff that I learned from lots of meditation and lots of crazy shit happening to me. So yeah, I won't get into that too much. So along with the proper sleep, along with the proper nutrition, there's also supplementation, which is also part of proper nutrition. So sometimes you can be eating the chicken breast, you can be eating the protein and the carbs and the, and the right good fats and these macros, you got them all down. But a lot of times the macros aren't telling you the whole story, right? You also need to understand that there is a delicate balance in nature which is way beyond just protein, carbs, and fats. There's all these different minerals, different types of vitamins, and they come in certain forms in nature that is not necessarily as effective when it comes into a supplement, right? So there are a lot of companies that try to mimic nature, but they're not necessarily doing it. They're, they're basically coming up with some sort of pill and saying, this is zinc. So for instance, like, okay, I'll, I'll give you an example. There's a, I like ZMA. ZMA, zinc, magnesium, aspartate, good, good product. I actually like taking that supplement from time to time. But if you take too much zinc, sometimes I can throw your selenium off. Hence, that's the case in point. Sometimes when you're taking a supplement, it can throw off a balance or a ratio in your system because one mineral might interfere with absorption of another. But in nature, this doesn't necessarily happen. In nature, there, things come in the right ratios so they have a um, efficient absorbability. So there's more efficiency when it comes down to the absorption rate of those minerals in the form that they come in. So even though I like zinc, magnesium, aspartate, and I still will take it from time to time, I find the best thing is to also experiment with certain types of supplements that aren't necessarily supplements, which I always talk about, which is organ meat. I made everybody sick on Instagram because I posted some liver or whatever I put on there. But, but having different types of organ meats, you will notice certain experiences from eating that organ meat in the body, like overall body relaxation or smoothness that all of a sudden moves through the body. There are these different sensations, depending on what you're deficient in, will depend on what type of experience you have. Now, obviously we don't have access to all the organs or even know how to prepare them sometimes. And sometimes some people just don't have the, you know, the stomach to basically <laughs> eat some of these things, like put a spleen or something like that in the pan and eat it and whatever. But the fact is I'm experimenting with some of these organs right now. And I've been experimenting with liver for years 
and I started experimenting with beef heart, I did notice a major sensation that happened when I ate beef heart. So there was probably something in there that I was deficient in because it's super high in coenzyme Q10, like a really high absorbable form of coenzyme Q10, along with other uh, factors and things involved. But I'm also going to be experimenting with, actually, I think, actually one second, I'll, I'll go get them in truck. I'm also going to be experimenting with like grass-fed beef pancreas. This is supposed to help with uh, digestion of protein along with stabilizing blood sugar. Like say you have blood sugar issues or your pancreas isn't working right, this can help with that. So I thought, hey, this would be kind of a neat experiment to see if this helps with my digestion. Uh, bone marrow is good for overall vitality, right? So this is ancestral supplements, right? So I'm going to be uh, experimenting with grass-fed beef organs. There's beef heart, beef liver, beef kidney, pancreas, and spleen. and yeah, I'm going to see basically what kind of results I get from this. And also here's grass-fed beef trachea. So trachea is supposed to be a really absorbable form of cartilage, which helps with regeneration of the joints, ligaments, tissues, and that sort of thing. So yeah, this is what I'm going to be doing. Kidney is actually supposed to also help with uh, skin. It's supposed to help with a bunch of other stuff. So I, I mean, I'm going to do some more research on that. But anyway, these tonics that are found in nature, which were kind of disconnected from modern society, this stuff has more absorbable forms of minerals or things that you might be deficient in, which also will hinder your recovery if you do not have them. Like go magnesium deficient just once in your life or potassium deficient and see what happens to your body and you will see exactly what I'm saying. And now somebody's calling me. So this sort of thing, this sort of thinking can assist you with maybe finding the missing link because whatever is the weak link in your nutrition is going to influence your recovery. It's gonna influence your sleep too. Because people who are deficient in certain uh, minerals and things, they'll have restless leg syndrome, they'll have issues when it comes down to getting to sleep. Uh, people who have uh, mineral deficiencies can also have blood sugar issues, which can hinder the absorbability of the nutrients you're taking in. You know, so this is something that is really big. I, I think this could be a major, major shift in your recovery and how you recover from your workouts and what feels right to you when you go to the gym, you know? Because if, if you're crippled, if you're crippled nutritionally, it doesn't matter what you do, you're always gonna feel like, wow, I, I just can't train, you know? My hormones are off, my minerals are off, my absorbability of my nutrients is off. I mean, this is not the epitome of training. Not absorbing your nutrients or not sleeping is obviously gonna kill your training, kill your ability to recover, and kill your enthusiasm for training, right? So this is something worth checking out anyway to see if it does address some sort of nutritional issue that might have been in the background of your training for a long time and maybe you know taking a look at this could really help. Now the other thing that can really help your recovery is massage therapy. I've talked about this before, but it is it is really important to get massage from period for periods of time. Now my wife is is an unbelievable energetic healer and and she's like governed by a totally different compass when it comes down to healing. So she's awesome. So I have that resource around me. So she does massage and stuff on me. Uh, we do massage on each other. I've got quite a bit of knowledge in massage just from personal experience, uh, but massage can make a massive difference in, in opening up blood flow in muscles that are knotted up or say your fascia or the second skin gets too tight around the muscle and then it's hindering blood flow. That can also hinder ligament recovery, tendon recovery. Uh, it can hinder uh, coordination, like how you move. Like if stuff's all glued together and you're kind of moving all dysfunctionally, that can create a certain issue. And some people do foam rolling and things and these mimic massage but it's not quite as effective as having an actual good massage therapist, you know, good one, working on you and actually going into certain areas and pinpointing major areas that are causing issues for you. So don't be afraid to try massage therapy out because that, that's something that is a very safe, and it, and it hurts like hell, but it actually starts to feel really good once the muscles are all functioning great, then it starts to feel very relaxing. Whereas the first session you go in there, you feel like you're gonna hit the ceiling because it's like so aggressive. It's like they're digging an the elbow into you and you're like, yay! And you're like, you're almost up the ceiling. So massage therapy has been a, an amazing, an amazing sort of uh, modality to maintain muscle mass. Now there's lots of different light therapies and stuff in the market. There's like red light therapy and stuff that might, you might wanna check into. Sometimes that's supposed to help recovery. I don't have enough experience in that area yet to really tell you definitively that it increases recovery or not. But I will say stuff like massage, like the simple stuff like that. I'm into acupuncture. 
um, that stuff can help too because if your organ systems once again are stuck if the energy is not moving right that can also hinder your recovery so again if you're open to that sort of thing Chinese medicine is actually a really neat way of looking at things too now the last thing I'm just gonna say is that the most obvious way to enhance recovery is to not destroy yourself from your training I mean you want to stimulate the muscles you want to break them down but you don't want to tear ligaments in half and then expect that somehow you're going to be able to recover, right? Some things you cannot recover from. I mean, so your body only has the capacity to attach things that are already attached, at least as far as work on recovering those areas, but it doesn't have the ability to just magically all of a sudden attach something that's severed or broken down to a point of no return, right? So you want to train responsibly by not bouncing off the joints at the bottom, not by doing super heavy, high coordination lifts ballistically in every single direction, you know? grasp it you know like that kind of thing like you don't want to be doing that shit right this is the stuff where uh people they try to become superheroes and realize pretty quickly that when they jump off a building that yeah you just don't recover from that even though the guy in the in the red underwear could do it you know what i'm saying like it's, it's not gonna be it's not gonna be a nice sort of ending for you so you want to train in the range of motion that is right for you with rep ranges that seem to be working but not causing massive massive joint pain after the workouts if you're getting massive inflammation massive tweaks uh, there's either an issue that you need to take care of nutritionally or through massage therapy a structural issue or you're training wrong for you this is definitely something to take a look at you're doing too much volume you're either doing too much weight or too excessive a range of motion and you've got to really look at this neutrally take your ego out of it and and really develop a strategy towards how can i continue to train instead of just expecting or putting unrealistic expectations on my body's recuperation ability, right? So, yeah, I hope this helps you out in your training. Thanks a lot for watching. If you need to get a hold of me, just go to naturalglandbodybuilding.com and thanks to the patient supporters and take care for now. Mountain. I think this was an awesome video. I thought it was a pretty good video. I think this is like a seminar for success in life. I think you guys got a lot out of this. Productive is the word I would come up with. Productive. Mountain.